In the first public confirmation by the U.S., the Defense Secretary confirmed that North Korean troops are in Russia. Defense ministers from Germany and the U.K. signed a pact to boost European security amid rising Russian aggression. The European Parliament and the Council clash over 1.52 billion euros cuts to the 2025 budget. An investigation into the disappearance of more than 50,000 child migrants has won an EU award for journalism. In the first public confirmation by the US, the Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said on Wednesday that there is evidence that North Korean troops are in Russia and it remains to be seen what they would be doing there. You know, as we continue to look at this, there is, uh, there is evidence that uh, there are DPRK troops uh, you know, in Russia. So what exactly they're doing, uh, left to be seen. These are things that we need to sort out. We'll have more for you on that, on that later. Hours earlier, Ukraine's military intelligence chief Kirill Budanov said that the first North Korean units were expected to arrive to Russia's Kursk region on Wednesday, the 23rd of October. They could supposedly help Russia resist Ukraine's incursion. Early in October, Budanov said the total number of around 11,000 North Korean troops in Russia will be ready to fight in Ukraine by the 1st of November. He said that in return, Russia is helping North Korea evade sanctions and develop its nuclear capabilities, including providing technologies for smaller tactical nuclear weapons and submarine missile launch systems. South Korea's spy chief stated that about 3,000 North Korean troops have been sent to Russia and they're now receiving training on drones and other equipment before being deployed to the battlefield in Ukraine. 러시아와 북한 사이에 계획한 약 1만여 명의 파병은 12월 경으로 예상된다라고 보고가 있었습니다. Volodymyr Zelensky said earlier that according to the military intelligence, some North Korean officers are already in the occupied territories of Ukraine. Defense ministers from Germany and the UK signed a pact on Wednesday to boost European security amid rising Russian aggression. Under the agreement, German submarine hunting planes will patrol the North Atlantic from a base in Scotland. UK Defense Secretary John Healy said the need for Europe to bolster its own security and for the UK to play a bigger role in NATO are what drove the deal. We share the same threats. War in Ukraine, conflict in the Middle East, growing Russian aggression. We share the same values, democracy, individual freedom, rule of law. And in a more dangerous world, allies are our strategic strength, and we must do more together. German defense giant Rheinmetall is set to open a factory producing artillery gun barrels using British steel. Britain and Germany are also expected to collaborate on developing new land-based and aerial drones, as well as long-range strike weapons that can travel farther than the UK's existing Storm Shadow missiles. El Parlamento Europeo y el Consejo están en plena guerra por el presupuesto de la Unión Europea para el año 2025, especialmente después de que el Consejo propusiera recortar en 1.500 millones de euros la propuesta de la Comisión Europea. El Parlamento Europeo, que ha votado este miércoles su postura, considera que este dinero no sería suficiente para cubrir programas clave de la UE, como por ejemplo Erasmus Plus, e impediría financiar las necesidades de los ciudadanos. Las dos instituciones deberán negociar este presupuesto antes de mediados de noviembre y se prevé que sea una discusión altamente política. Además, también habrán de decidir cómo se van a pagar los intereses del Fondo de Recuperación que han subido en los últimos años. Aida Sánchez Alonso, Euronews, Estrasburgo. An investigation into the disappearance of more than 50,000 child migrants has won the European Parliament's 2024 Daphne Caruana Galizia Prize for Journalism. 
Lost in Europe, a project led by Dutch journalist Heisha van Haren revealed that since 2021, on average, nearly 47 migrant children arriving in Europe have gone missing per day. The research uncovered significant inconsistencies in documentation and reporting across 31 countries, including Austria, Germany and Italy, raising concerns that the actual number of missing children may be higher. They say this is just a tip of the iceberg, that there were 51,433 uh, children uh, missing. Um, the last time that we did this uh, investigation, there were only uh, 18,000 uh, children missing back in 2021. So the number did increase. Uh, we don't know what happens if we do the investigation again in three years. The investigation found that many of these children fall victim to human trafficking or get caught up in people smuggling gangs. Many children are uh, also caught at the borders and they end up in prison for people smuggling whilst they were smuggling, uh, smuggled themselves. So the uh, EU uh, war against people sm uh, smuggling uh, works out the other way for uh, minor children. A lot of minor children are in adult uh, detention uh, because of that. The Lost in Europe team received their award at a ceremony in Strasbourg. At least five people have been killed and around 20 injured in an apparent terrorist attack in the Turkish capital of Ankara. Assailants set off explosives and opened fire against the Turkish state-run aerospace and defence company, according to Turkish President Erdogan. Local media reported three assailants, including a woman, arriving at an entry to the complex inside a taxi. Authorities said two of the attackers had been neutralised and ambulance and firefighters were dispatched to the site. Helicopters were seen flying above the headquarters of Turkish Aerospace Industries as security forces entered the site, according to local media. Established in 1984, TAI is a leading aerospace company in Turkey that specialises in the manufacture, design and modern development of integrated aerospace systems. It was not clear who or what group may have been behind the attack. A burning bus is one of the most visible signs of the night of violence in Lisbon. Several Portuguese municipalities were affected by violent clashes in a second night of confrontations with police, triggered by the death of Odair Moniz, a Cape Verdean citizen shot by a police officer on Monday. Four people were injured, including two officers. Three people were arrested following the disturbances, which set fire to two buses, several small vehicles and rubbish bins. The Portuguese government called the violence unacceptable and the president emphasized the need to preserve public safety and order. The Ministry of Internal Affairs has ordered an urgent inquiry into the circumstances surrounding Odair Moniz's death. The Portuguese police force claims that the man fled and tried to attack the police with a bladed weapon. The officer who shot the man has since been charged. French maritime authorities pulled the bodies of two migrants from the English Channel on Wednesday that had attempted to cross the treacherous waterway between France and England. Their deaths were confirmed by a medical team in the French port of Calais. This pushes the count of dead and missing in French waters so far this year to 53. In a statement, authorities said a surge operation was launched after a life vest was found at sea. 46 other people on board a heavily overloaded inflatable boat were rescued, they added. Pensions has become a hot topic in Germany, with several political parties capitalising on poverty amongst retirees. We sat down with Berlin pensioner Anchi, who told us she receives €1,500 net per month after a 45-year career working as an elderly carer to ask about the reality of pensions. And what about the other pensioners at the care home Anchi worked at? Yeah, I have specially, have I generally remarked, um, 
ältere Leute, die irgendwo untergebracht werden müssen oder untergebracht werden durch ihre Angehörigen und so. Viele doch wenig, die haben nur so ein bisschen Grundtaschengeld im Monat, die selber sehr schlecht dastehen. Aber früher waren viele doch, gerade die Frauen, die waren zu Hause und, und haben eben, eben nicht, die waren von dem Mann abhängig oder haben sich um die Kinder gekümmert. Und die sind im Alter schon ein bisschen allein, ich finde, sehr allein gelassen, ja, auch vom Staat her. We spoke to the German pension system, who highlighted that pensions are tied to wage development and said that pensions have increased by 4.5% this year. They also recommended relying on other sources of income for retiring. Wir haben in Deutschland seit 2001 das sogenannte Drei-Säulen-Modell, das heißt Alterseinkommen ist eben nicht nur die gesetzliche Rentenversicherung, sondern viele beziehen auch noch aus anderen Quellen. Beispielsweise drei Säulen, die große tragende Säule, die gesetzliche Rentenversicherung. Es gibt aber auch noch die private Altersvorsorge und die betriebliche Altersvorsorge. Und das können auch Einnahmequellen im Alter sein. Es gibt noch Kapitalvermögen, es gibt Einnahmen aus Vermietung und Verpachtung, es gibt vielleicht einen Partner, der einen mitfinanziert, sodass man, wenn man später auf die Alterseinkünfte an sich schaut, eben immer schauen sollte, wie ist denn der Haushaltskontext und nicht nur rein auf die gesetzliche Rentenversicherung. Despite that, the pension system is a gift that allows seniors who have contributed to society for 45 years to be given the opportunity to retire for another few decades in peace. Liv Stroud, for Euronews. Euronews. The news.